many times we talk about national expenditure and we talk about what the government is doing. But, Madam Speaker, at many times, the citizens of Kenya are not able to conceptualize exactly what is government, who is government. Because many times we think government is an amorphous figure somewhere seated, Madam Speaker, and especially insofar as development is concerned. CDF, NGCDF demystifies what government is insofar as projects are concerned, and especially in regards to community projects. Going around the country, Madam Speaker, anyone would see the kind of changes NGCDF has brought to our communities. Hardly would you go to any side of Kenya, to any corner of Kenya, without seeing the significance of NGCDF in regards, Madam Speaker, to projects that touch the members of our localities, and especially in the deepest, Madam Speaker, of the villages of Kenya. And therefore, Madam Speaker, we must keep on supporting NGCDF in all ways. We are already doing that through the budget. I am sure we'll be mentioning that tomorrow insofar as enhancing NGCDF is concerned. And Madam Speaker, even structurally, I always feel that other devolved funds can borrow a lot from NGCDF. Because the way in which NGCDF is administered, Madam Speaker, it can be a very good learning book for any country, and even within our country in regards to uh, development funds. This is a fund where out of 100 shillings allocated, 95 goes into real, tangible development projects. And Madam Speaker, when we talk about real development projects, NGCDF is not just a kitty for building infrastructure, but also of adding value to the highest resource we have in the country, which is the human resource. And that is why, Madam Speaker, Comparatively, CDF across all the 290 constituencies, we are the biggest supporters of, of education, Madam Speaker, only number two from the Ministry of Education. And this goes a long way into adding value, into servicing the human capital, because it is the highest priced factor of production that we have as a country. Madam Speaker, I have been towing with the idea that because we have been there as NGCDF and a lot has happened in terms of brick and mortar, probably we could entertain ideas of even enlarging the bracket of bursaries that you are able to offer through, through NGCDF. And especially from the current bud from 25 to 35 percent to somewhere around 50 percent. And the reason why, Madam Speaker, I've been entertaining this idea, I have a program supported by NGCDF in Keharu, which we call Keharu Masomobora Program, which supported by NGCDF, the parents of Keharu who have their young ones in their schools, they pay only 1,000 per term, only 1,000 per term in terms of school fees. And those that which are interested in having remedial they can have local arrangement with the teachers, but at to a maximum of 1,000 per term. Madam Speaker, this is to enhance having as many of the people of that age in schools, but also, Madam Speaker, by making also school exciting. Because one of the things we've done even in that program is that we realized even us when we were in school, we could be kept in school more hours not because of books, but other things that happen, and especially food. So after realizing that and knowing that we can't change that fact, we worked around it, changed even the menu, where majority of us when we was in school, we would take our staple food from Monday to the, to, to the last day of the week, which is Friday. What we've done is to recalibrate the same. We have rice three days and the staple food, which is the three days, and we also provide food over Saturday, Madam Speaker, so that those learners who would want to be in school even on Saturdays 
have an opportunity to be in school. Madam Speaker, I don't just wish to give the scorecard, but I am giving the facts in terms of how NGCDF can be transform transformative. Out of 112 public primary schools in Keharo, Madam Speaker, when we took over, and with the assistance of NGCDF, our classrooms were dilapidated. They were, they never qualified to be called classrooms, Madam Speaker, because they were structures that looked more like museums. But Madam Speaker, through NGCDF, we have been able to transform all the 112 public primary schools, and all of them, they look like what we call like academies, and all of them are tiled, Madam Speaker, to the exclusion of none, all the 112. Madam Speaker, the reason I'm saying that this is because I believe NGCDF being a community fund, there is a lot we can do around it, and especially in how we expect that money. Community money should not be expected by big contractors from big cities. The contractors who should benefit from the fact that are community-based are actually the people around the, the areas that we uh, undertake those projects. And that is what we did in Keharu, Madam Speaker. All our projects, we involve the local community. We use the procurement methods that necessitate that all the money remains around the community. And Madam Speaker, by doing so, initially we imparted skills Number one of fixing, fixing tiles to 150 footies from Keharo, who have done all the tiling, and we also trained our in-house team of 150 who do all the manner of professional painting that we do. The reason I'm saying this is not basically because of Keharo and GCDF. I'm saying this having Keharo and GCDF as a representation of the other 290 just to show the country the level at which NGCDF can transform. Madam Speaker, because of the nature of this fad, we have had many other countries coming to Kenya. Just recently, I was with one of our colleagues, a friend of mine from the Parliament of Zambia. They have a similar fad like NGCDF, and Madam Speaker, they actually came to benchmark on how to administer NGCDF from Kenya. We have to keep ourselves alive into the dynamics of change, even in management of such fads so that we do not again give these kind of tale stories like the ones we give when Singapore came to Kenya to run about national development. And therefore, the more the reason that NGCDF had to keep evolving so that it continues, Madam Speaker, to address issues that are current. And that is part of the reason why I still believe and entertain the idea that we must enlarge the bracket of NGCDF in terms of bursary because many more constituencies can offer Masomobora or kind, that kind of um, program where we lessen the burden of parents, Madam Speaker, and especially those who have their children in uh, day schools. Mr. Speaker, I have seen there is a change just because of the viewers. They don't uh, get confused. There is a Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mr. Uh, and Madam. Mr. Speaker, I support this report and support the fact that we continue to be audited properly through internal auditors and also the Office of the Auditor General because anywhere money is concerned, Mr. Speaker, and we are paying people for them to check on us, it is important for them to continue doing that job so that every shilling will count in so far as community development is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I also want to hail the kind of good work that we see being done in Homerby Town constituency which is also one of the leading constituencies in terms of administering NGCDF. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, who is uh, 